Greetings and salutations, everyone. Welcome to the Crypto Truth, where I give you the truth as I see it. So I am getting tired. I am getting tired of trying to explain this to people. I think a lot of people have just, I don't know, missed the boat. As you guys can see here, we're going to talk about distributed ledger technology. I need everyone to please, please, please explain. Give me one second. Just got started. All right. If you are familiar. Okay, that feels better. All right. If you are familiar with how blockchain and these district distributed ledger technologies work i need you guys to please educate people because i really don't think i don't think a lot of people really understand exactly what is going on here or understand the tech behind it so i'm not going to read all this you guys know how i like to read but i'm going to read the important things and then i'm gonna get to the different dlts which is yeah, down to the bottom here blockchain hash graph dag then we're going to take a look at um, this chart here. This is all one-on-one blockchains. This is public information, which which really, I don't really understand why more people aren't talking about this, but all right, let's get it started. I'm going to start reading this. So if you are driving, um, don't worry, you're not missing anything, just a bunch of words. Looking back at the origins of DLT, the arrival of Bitcoin in 2008 is probably the first milestone. Since then, blockchain technology has gained the attention of the business world with its features of resistance to modification and secure storage of records of different transactions. A closer look at the trends in the blockchain ecosystem for 2020 can showcase the potential of DLT. All right, now I'm going to skip all of this because, well, we pretty much already know this. Most of you guys are extremely intelligent people, so I'm not going to um, go through all the boring stuff. Okay, so what is a distributed ledger technology? DLTs, distributed ledger technology or DLTs, basically implies a new and rapidly evolving approach for recording and sharing information across multiple data stores. Each of the data stores, i.e. ledgers, has the same data records subject to maintenance and control through a distributed network of computer servers, referred to as nodes. You can thus think of DLT as a distributed database with certain unique properties. Blockchain is just a variant of DLT that uses cryptographic and algorithmic approaches to create a, and verify a continuously expanding append only data structure that gradually turns into a chain of transaction blocks that serve the role of a ledger. Diving into the work of DLT can also help in further refining your knowledge of DLT. All right, we got that. All down here, then all the participants in the network evaluate the data block and verifies validity, excuse me, according to the predefined algorithmic um, alg algorithmic validation method. The predefined al algorithmic validation method is also known as blockchain consensus mechanism. When the data block is validated, all participants can add the block to their own ledgers, creating hence a chain of blocks. And that's why we have the blockchain. To summarize, DLT ensures that changes to the ledger are reflected through the whole network. And all network members have a detailed identical copy of the whole ledger at any specific instance. One can clearly notice that the functionalities of DLT are primarily responsible due to two core components. I'm not gonna get to those uh, core components because we're gonna get into that later. All right, there's a reason why I'm saying all this. Now I am gonna read the entire thing of all of this stuff here, okay? Um, so we're gonna go through the different um, distributed ledger technologies right now. Excuse me, there's um on a side note, I want you guys to know that there's a lot of changes going on in my life right now. Um, so that's the reason why I know I keep saying I'm gonna have a plethora of videos and then all of a sudden I just vanish off of thin air. I have not gone anywhere. I don't intend to go anywhere, but 
in the future, my videos may be a little bit different, um, but we'll see. Uh, this week is going to be a very interesting week. Um, so, yeah, just want to give you guys a heads up on that. All right, blockchain. We're going to start off with all of them. Blockchain, there's no doubt. This is what one-on-one blockchains are saying. There's no doubt blockchain is currently the most popular DLT variant in the world. The transaction records are stored in a ledger in the form of a, of a chain of blocks, like a long list of records. The digital information stored in the blocks include the time, date, and specifications of a transaction. In addition, the blocks in blockchain also contain the sender's information with the unique digital sig signature to safeguard anonymity. Ano anonymity. The blocks in a blockchain contain a special ID termed as the hash that differentiates and synchronizes transactions. The hash function provides reliable support to distinguish all the transaction blocks in the ledger. All right, hash graph. The next addition among types of DLT is the hash graph, which allows the storage of multiple transactions on a ledger with the same timestamp. A record on a ledger in a hash graph is known as an event and involves the storage of all transactions in parallel structure. The Hashgraph DLT system ensures that no nodes on the network can change the transactions or information. Upon comparison to the blockchain, you can clearly notice the additional facilities of choosing the transaction of including a block. One of the interesting highlights about Hashgraph as a DLT variant refers to the requirement of a smaller storage unit as you don't have to store transaction information in the ledger for eternity. In a hash graph, all nodes in the network would reach an agreement on the process of transaction and list the process accordingly. All right, let's go to DAG. The next addition among DLT types refers to DAG or directing a, a, a cyclic graph. A DAG is basically an improved DLT with a different structure. DAG is capable of supporting nano transactions and better improvements in scalability with the expansion of the network. In addition, DAG also differs from the DLT types on the basis of its consistent mechanism. Every node on the network has to provide proof of transactions on the ledger and could initiate transactions. Nodes have to verify at least two of the previous transactions on the ledger to confirm their transaction. Therefore, transactions with longer branches of previous validated transactions are more likely to be considered to be valid, uh, are, are likely to be considered valid. Companies that have to deal with massive volumes of transactions could use DAG. The next one up, Holochain. Holochain DLT is the next recent addition among DLT types of other than blockchain. It is one of the most advanced DLTs presently that provides developers with new approaches for a creation of decentralized apps. The foremost difference between Holochain and other DLT types refers clearly to the agent-centric structure. Holochain DLT avoids global consensus mechanisms by providing all agents with their own forking system. Therefore, Holochain serves as a promising alternative for business use cases that demand higher scalability and system integrity. Next up, Tempo. The final addition among the new variants of DLT refers to Tempo, Tempo rate rated. The Tempo is a relatively new addition that provides the benefit of time step along with other DLT functionalities. One of the major highlights of Tempo is that there is no need for any modification to use Tempo for public and private modules. Furthermore, you wouldn't need any prominent additions in terms of hardware components for the creation of your own decentralized applications, coins, or tokens. Okay, so uh, we see here that there are different, di uh, different uh, distributed ledger technologies. Uh, 
this is something, uh, th whoever the author is, even though the DLTs hold bright promises for the future, it still has to reach a stage of maturity. The most formidable challenge for DLT is to strike ba a balance between data security, privacy, and transparency. We all know this as the trifecta. Da data security and event of network scalability and transparency among strong privacy safeguards continue to pose a formidable, formidable challenges to DLT. Which DLT? Right? Final words. The road ahead for distributed ledger technology is not paved with easy opportunities. From a neutral perspective, there are still many shortcomings in DLT along with the promising uh, potential it has for various industries. Understanding DLT is more than knowing how it is different from blockchain. And that's the thing I want you guys to understand. Um, any of you that are new, you need to understand uh, and most of you guys who are Holochain fans, you know that um, Holochain is a DLT. It's a distributed ledger technology. A lot of people think that Holochain is a coin still. That, that it, it, it really, oh, here's the author down here, Diego. Uh, Diego. Um, knowing the shortcomings of DLT is key to resolving them. Opportunities uncovering by fixing DLT limitations. Allow the user to explore more about DLT to discover its potential for transforming various conventional op operations across different industries. In the long run, DLT will most likely serve as the basis of all peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So it's better to start learning more about distributed ledger technology right now. This is absolutely correct. And I'm sorry for if you guys hear um, fireworks in the background. It is the fourth over here. So it's the 4th of July over here in America. Happy 4th to some of you guys who are here in America. All right, so now that we got that, you guys got kind of got an idea of what blockchains are. Let's go ahead and switch to this graph here. I have read this before, and I have done this before, but I'm going to do it again. I feel like it's extremely important for everyone to understand that the cryptocurrency world is just it's it's like at the beginning stages right and i believe that all of these can be used to better humanity um i don't think that all of them are, are bad i do think that uh obviously i'm a holochain fan i do think that holochain um creates more of a um uh, is more of an advanced technology and and is uh, working now, right? Um, so I'm very interested to see how long this is going to take. It's been, what, 10, 14 years and still people don't understand blockchain. Here in America, if you say, hey, you know what a hash graph is? It, unless they're into it, they're not going to know. Ask them what a DAG is. Ask them what a chain is. They don't know. Um, they just don't. And I'm, I'm guaranteeing... Uh, that a lot of people across the world just don't know. So let's go ahead and get into the categories. They have mining, transactions per second, data structure, validations of transactions, time of launch, network running on networks running on a platform. All right. So categories, mining. Participants have the ability to mint new tokens via different consensus mechanisms. With Hashgraph, nodes create consensus through virtual voting. With DAG, the previous transaction validates the succeeding to achieve consensus. With Holochain, nodes run on an individual chains, hence miners not needed to validate transactions. Okay. Transactions per second. Blockchain. Highly limited in terms of scalability and TPS. We have always known this. Hashgraph. Unique consensus mechanisms reduce computational burden Hence, high scalability and high TPS. Uh, and for some of you guys don't know, TPS, transactions per second. Unique data structure via direct acyclic graphs ensure that scalability and TPS are high. And finally, for Holochain, each node processes its own ledger, hence limitless scalability and TPS. Now, I... I want you guys to understand that this whole thing, this is from 101 blockchains. And so they are um, they are obviously stating if you're using Holochain, it's going to be limitless 
scalability and TPS. Uh, Arthur Brock um, came in and uh, on Twitter and he stated um, as much. Not that he said that it was limitless scalability. Uh, they have this thing about hype or whatever it is. Uh, but in a way, it was it was like an equation. It was confusing to me, but I guess it explained to others why um, the transaction per second was so high. Data structure, data structure in blocks in order to in order of transactions which are validated by miners in the ecosystem. That's blockchain. Hashgraph, virtual voting and gossip about gossip ensures that transactions are validated by the majority. DAG, data structure follows the direct acyclic graph mechanisms where each transaction is independent. Holochain, data is distributed among various nodes on the platform, hence there is no problem of network congestion. Validation of transactions. For blockchain, miners have the power to postpone a transaction or cancel it entirely. I want you guys to understand this. Read this again. Miners have the power to postpone a transaction or cancel it entirely. Hashgraph. Validation of transactions is as per consensus. Dag. The success of present transaction relies on its ability to validate two previous transactions. Holochain. Nodes process their own ledgers, hence there is no need for miners. Time of launch went public in 2008. Still going strong now. I made a video about how I believe um, uh, Bitcoin will be uh, it blockchain's number one. And I believe that Bitcoin will be um, a store of value and a store of value only. Um, because I don't think... I think it may go through its phase where people will use it as a medium of exchange, but it's not really built for that. Hashgraph, available for public use as of 24, August 24th, 2018. DAG, NXT is the um, first platform utilizing DAG and it came out on November 9th, 2015. Holochain, Alpha One product released on May 26, 2018. And we all know that it's in beta right now. Networks running on a platform, blockchain. Bitcoin and Ethereum are the most popular networks built on blockchain. Hashgraph, Swirls and NOIA are the only networks on Hashgraph. DAG, NXT, Tango, and Bit Byte Ball are the most popular networks using DAG Foundation. Holochain, Holochain Network is best known is the best known network on this platform. Interesting. So you guys see here, and obviously it, I'm not gonna read all this. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna make sure I put it down in the um I'm gonna make sure that I put it down in um uh in the in the description below. Um uh, so you guys can do your own research. Look, I just want you guys to understand that there are different distributed te ledger technologies, and um, you know, it's very important to I know that a lot of you are Holochain fans out there, um, as am I, uh, more or less. And I want you guys to understand that with all of this stuff, it's going to take time. And it's, you know, they all have their different use cases. And it's going to happen. Eventually, the world is going to change. AI has already changed the world dramatically. And I, you know, who knows what the next thing is going to be. I heard they may have flying cars out right now. And hopefully we can get past that pump because I've been waiting for that ever since Back to the Future. I ain't seen no flying car yet. Not one that runs efficiently in a way. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. I want to wish you guys a great day. 
Um, as I always say, please, people, this is why I'm doing this. Do your own research, do your own research, and do your own research. Last but not least, above all else, it's getting crazy out there. Stay safe out there, okay? Bye, you guys.